Hey, Jim, we knew you couldn't stay away from this uh, wild market. So what's your take on the past two days? First, thanks for letting me play, Melissa, and it's great that we're doing the special. I think that we, you know, we saw some things, this obviously 2,400 on the S&P battleground, but we saw some things I really like. And one is, is that uh, when we've been this oversold, and I use the S&P oscillator I pay for, typically when it goes over 10, you have to buy, except for one particular instance, which was 2008, 2009, I think this is much more of a man-made sell-off. I think the Fed made some mistakes. I think that we got a little too uh, negative about what could happen in the trade deal. And a lot of people just capitulated in panic. But the thing I, I've got to tell you, when I was listening to our shows this morning, was I, I, and I'm reading, way too many people say this is exactly a bear market spike. And I want to point out, since I've been trading since 79, every bear market ends with a spike. So that's not really dispositive. What matters to me is are we going to have more events like what we had since October 3rd and 4th. We end up more Fed rate hikes without really a lot of consequences from the Fed's point of view, meaning they can do whatever they want. No one seems to mind other than the president. Are we going to have uh, any chance at all of a trade deal? I think we can. Is oil, which has been straight down since October 3rd, October 4th, bottoming? I think it might be because this is, these are prices where the Permian can't withstand continuing to pump. So I see some positives. And I do think, by the way, that you know people are just way too pa- – we have had an ongoing rolling crash for months. And it's not like there aren't some bargains at 13 times earnings. Yeah, I mean, it's been a rolling bear market, exactly to your point. We saw semiconductors go by the wayside. We saw FANG go by the way. I mean, it just was sector by sector by sector. So here we are now, Jim. What do you tell investors to do? I mean, when you see a terrible Christmas Eve and then you get two sharp days higher with this big reversal today, by the way, um, do you start getting out that buy list? Um, I think that you can take a look at some of the serious destruction, high-quality names. You mentioned the semiconductors, by the way. I'm not a fan of Micron. But that stock hangs in. That's all. That's data. Of all. The thing that drove Micron down was a belief that the data center was slowing. But we had the biggest moves in a long time in, in Splunk. And, and we, big move in ServiceNow, big move in, in uh, Salesforce. I, I think that those are indicative of the fact that I don't want people, longer-term people, in, into those is fine. But indicative that there's some things going on that are positive. And so I think that... Yeah, you've got to figure out what you are willing, what your um, time horizon is. I mean, let's say you're in your 60s or 70s, so I want you to start committing money. Yeah, geez, it, this market is not for that kind of, uh, uh, it's a speculative market. But I think there's a lot of stocks for people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, just put it in the S&P again. Don't freak out and find some stocks that you like if you want to. We call them mad money stocks. Look, it is, it is not a market for the squeamish, but when I look at a stock like a Walmart that has just gone straight down, held 85, didn't take out 88 today, I say to myself, you know what, that's a sign of strength, not weakness. And I'm seeing more stocks that have shown strength in the last two days than in a long time. So, yeah, I mean, I, it, it was supposed to go down big, wasn't it, Melissa? And then it did, but it didn't go down all the way. So I think we're okay. Uh, you um, tweeted moments ago, I believe, that uh, if you're in your 60s and you're just talking about this, uh, look at your allocation because ad- adding CDs may be a way to go here in this sort of volatile market. Um, sadly, I'm, I am in those, that, those years. <laughs> <laughs> I am adding some CDs, which I've not done in a long time. But remember, our faithful friend Jay Powell has made it so the CD is your best friend. And that's one of the problems. I mean, if we're going to do two more rate hikes, he's just going to make CDs more and more competitive and make it so that there's less and less of an ability to be able to invest in the stock market, which I think would be a shame. But I think, look, look, he can walk back what he, what he has to do. But the fact is, is that CDs are really yielding a lot. And I, I feel like that this market is no longer as safe as it's been because you don't like it when it goes up 1,000 and down 800, up 600. That's not healthy. But I also think that if you've got the time horizon to own a high-quality Eli Lilly or a high-quality Walmart, Walmart, high-quality J.P. Morgan, I don't think you're going to do badly, but you can't look at it like you used to because it will make you sick. Yeah. What do you make of retail stocks at this point, Jim? And we got some great uh, MasterCard spending data. We also, though, got consumer confidence data today, which was very disappointing. Um, So what do you make of this beaten-down group at this point? You know, that group peaked pretty much at the same time that Brian Cornell from Target legendarily said, look, this is about as good as, you know, this is the greatest he's ever seen it, which then became as good as it's ever going to get. Uh, I think that retail's okay, uh, not great, not bad. And one of the reasons why it's okay, not great, not bad, frankly, is because the Fed has just created a level of fright that makes it so people are saying, you know what, my wealth affects, as I check my statement, which they're going to do in the next couple of weeks, 
well, maybe I'm not as wealthy as I thought. Uh, I know that the mall itself was terrible. It was really online. Online's terrific, but the fact is is that there's a lot of stores that are doing very badly. And this whole notion that it was a great Christmas is an across the board, but it's not looking at brick and mortar. And brick and mortar in the mall was bad. It wasn't okay. It was bad. People have to start recognizing that. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there, Jim, and Fang, Fang Plus names, they're on their shopping list. Is that... Is that a fool's game, or is, is that a place you'd go? Uh, we have a lot of stocks that are very beaten down, and you can pick one of those. Uh, when I created FANG, I, I didn't think it was going to be a diversified portfolio. Somehow people view it as diversified, or they're in an ETF that is all FANG. Give me a break. As someone who put them together, Melissa, pick one. And uh, the one I would pick, I think, is the cheapest one is Alphabet. Uh, Amazon a couple days ago was pretty amazing. I think Amazon's okay. But you know what? The idea of just running in and saying this is the bottom in Facebook, like I've heard people say, who knows? I mean, Facebook did some change today to their Instagram feed, which was stupid as all get out. They're proving to be, I don't like to use the word morons toward people who were like top of their class at Harvard, but wow, what a bunch of morons. I mean, can they get anything right? And so I, I can't bank on those guys, but I can bank on traditional industrialists uh, who are doing a good job. I can bank on, look, I can, I can bank on, on uh, Jamie Dimon without much of a problem. I can certainly bank on Doug McMillan. I can bank on some of these CEOs who are very, very good. I can bank on James Quincy at, at Coca-Cola and feel okay. But, you know, pick one fang. But don't pick an ETF that's made up of fang, because that's just stupid people who put together things to make big fees who are just great. All right, those smart words, Jim. Um, in terms of what we watch uh, t in tomorrow's session, tomorrow morning, you wake up in the morning, what are the first things you'll look at as tells for the market trade that day? Oil, oil, and then oil. Yeah. Because oil is the most, is the kind of lead indicator of what the algos are looking at. Second, you want to see this 2,400 levels. It's 2,436 really, but 2,400 levels, such, a, such an incredible battleground. It's amazing. I want to see if the market goes down, I want to see the VIX not go up much from 2,996. I like the way the VIX acted in the last hour. And I do want to see uh, the oscillator stay as negative. Interestingly enough, the oscillator is more negative today than yesterday. I like that. We've seen this pattern, uh, this kind of pattern, again, in a bunch of situations where you had to do some buying. But don't buy up. I mean, look what, you, look what they gave you today. They gave you just a down 2 3% gem. And if you buy up, I'm telling you they're going to make you look like an idiot.